Hell yes, we're gonna take your AR-15, your AK-47. Are you sure about that? It's a good place. Here we are in the middle of it, right up on the mountain. If this son of a bitch wants that bitch about his cows over here and shoot at me, well, it's our country. All right, what's up, everybody? Somebody asked for a video on my current comm setup. So this is going to be a little bit more in-depth video than that, but, uh, yeah. Um, this is my full comm setup. I have a couple more capabilities. Uh, some stuff using... Um, uh, SDR dongles and tablets to track aircraft and stuff. I would consider that to be comms. The ability to send wind link and stuff like that. But as far as like small team comms, uh, I'll go over kind of my setup here. And a couple other things. Uh, first thing you'll notice is I got three Baofeng UV-5Rs and one uh, Baofeng, what is this, 3WP? GT3WP? Yeah. Um, that's because you know the old saying, one is, uh, one is, two is one and one is done? Well, for Baofangs, it's more like three is one and two is none because they're going to break on you. Uh, if you haven't seen my infamous short about the uh, stupid, these stupid little, uh, let me back everything up here so you can kind of see. These uh, dumb little rubber duckies that come on these Baofangs. They break super easy, and I'll show you exactly where they're going to break. They're going to break in the worst spot. So right there, well, let me see if I can get in focus. This is going to snap off inside of here, and then it's a pain to get. Get out. So like I said in that video, you're better off just getting you in Nagoya to go. Uh, there's the Velociraptors every video. Would you guys shut up? Oh, here they all come. All seven of them. We might as well wait. You guys are actually the worst. Thank you. Now be quiet for the rest of the video. Sorry about that. Anyways, like I was saying, these rubber ducks are terrible. This one that comes on the 3WP is not bad. You could tell it's actually reinforced. It's a little bit better quality of an antenna. The Nagoya, I would argue even more so. Uh, this is my current radio I'm using. Uh, I'll get over why I'm changing this in a bit. It's not that much better, but you can see that, you know, it's just a, it's just a better build, build quality. It's a little bit thicker down here. It's got a little bit more protection, a little bit harder to snap off. But yeah, so if you're going to have a Biofang, have about three of them. Uh, usually you can get these in packs. I got this in a two-pack. Each pack came with two batteries a piece, so two radios, two antennas, four batteries, two chargers, two hand mics, two little stupid earpieces. The one thing I will say with Baofangs is all the little, you know, little earpiece, hand mic, uh, antennas you get it's all junk it's all junk the bail thing itself is kind of junk and I hate to say that because I love the radio but it's kind of junk but all the little shit you get with it for sure is junk get rid of it get something else get you a better boom mic something um, let's before we go any further let me just answer the question what is my current column setup for my person in a small team and then we'll get into uh, some of the more interesting stuff here in a bit so here's my current setup. It is a Baofeng UV-5R with an extended battery, a Disco 32 push to talk hooked in to my Peltors. All right, these are dual comm Peltors. I could run, you know, two radios if I wanted to. I don't have that ability. These are just the Peltors I have. Uh, I didn't have to pay for them, so that's why I got them. Anyways, Disco 32. 
Uh, this is a great push to talk. Um, it can kind of come loose here sometimes. The way I have it in my pouch, it keeps it pretty good. I've still had a couple times where I've had to kind of squeeze on the pouch just to secure it, but nonetheless, it can come loose. Um, I prefer electronic hearing protection just because I like it. I like having my surroundings, the sound amplified. Um, I've been rocking Peltors for a long time, and since I put them on the first time, uh, I've basically never taken them off. I love Peltors. Uh, I, I I don't rock, you know, the cool guy freaking flip to side things. I can fit these under my helmet. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I've done it entire JRTC NTC rotations. It's not that big of a deal. Is it the most comfortable after a couple hours? No, this thing kind of kind of pushed down on you, but it's not that bad. Uh, you just got to adjust your helmet right, okay? There's no reason to spend money on the cool freaking flip to side, you know, whatever those are called. You don't need it. It's not necessary. Now, what am I changing about this? Well, this and this are all kind of going to be the same. Here's what I'm waiting to come in the mail. This has a different push to talk. It's called a multi-pin. See if I can undo this with my nail, which I probably can't. I might be able to undo it with a battery. No, I can't. Anyways, this has a different connector than your typical two pin on a UV5R. So what I'm waiting to come in from Disco 32 is the uh, basically multi-pin version of the PTT. Um, why am I doing that? Well, I just like this radio better. It feels more sturdy. It's waterproof. Uh, definitely more waterproof than the regular bail thing. It just feels like a better all-around radio. Um, some negative sides about this. It's got different batteries, as you can see. That's unfortunate. So now all the batteries I have for these and this are going to stay with those. But that's going to be my personal comm setup. So if you just came for that, you can click away. It's going to be a GT3WP Disco 32 push to talk. I just spit all over the place. And a pair of contacts plugged into it. That's my personal uh, comm setup for my small team. Now, some things I'm experimenting with. I already experimented with one of these once, but uh, one thing I'm experimenting with, I haven't done it yet, is but, uh, well, I've kind of like wargamed it with myself and set it up and seen if it would work. Taking two bayo fangs and um, seeing if I can use them as a repeater. Um, the more important part that I've tried doing, and I didn't use this with the repeater, but it could be possibly used better with the repeater, is I took when I took this out on one of my hikes. Here we go. Hey, hey. No, that's enough. I'm sorry. They're the worst. But what I have here is uh, oh, what do they call these? I don't remember what they call them, but it's basically a big rollout antenna, as you can see. And what I do with this is. Use it as an antenna. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. That was, uh, was being a smart ass. Anyways. So. In theory, line of sight radios, you just need more line of sight. So what I experimented with was taking one of these. This is uh, basically a coax to the antenna lead for a Beofang UV5R or just this common threading. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, you ought to forgive me, ham nerds. But anyways, just screwing this into here. Then I have 50 feet of coax. 50 feet of coax. Uh, I attach this to here. Coax to the antenna. And then what I did is, is I attached to the top parts of this antenna, a some 550 cord and a throw bag. A uh, throw bag was just full of rocks and it was an old sock. Threw it up in the tree, could pull the antenna up, and theoretically I would have a much larger line of sight. It didn't work. And I'll tell you why it didn't work and why I have to do this test again. Because my dogs like to open up my freaking packages when I'm not home. And I didn't see it because I didn't fucking test my gear. I didn't inspect my gear. So yeah, hopefully you can see that. That would be the handiwork of Poncho and Ruby, my Black Lab and my Great Pyrenees. Yeah. So that was a failure. So now I got to, you know test it again at some time. I guess it's not too big of a deal, but it is a bummer I paid for it just for my dog to eat it. But yeah, 
that's some of the stuff I'm experimenting with. Um, I'm not going to go into, you know, uh, my SDR setups and stuff like that. Number one, I don't think I have the experience with those to talk on them quite yet. Uh, I know how to use it, sure, but there's other people out there who have significantly more experience than that with me. Uh, S2 Underground, that's uh, probably the main one I would recommend you go watch. But yeah, if you're just looking for a simple Minuteman Gorilla, let's start using Gorilla instead of Minuteman. It's just a cooler word. Um, get you a Bale Fang UV5R with the extended battery, uh, preferably something that has two of them, and get you a Disco 32 PTT and some type of cheap electronic hearing protection that can go into it that has this type of pin. That's what I would recommend. Um, I wouldn't recommend Peltors because if you're going to buy Peltors, then maybe you should just buy a more expensive radio first. I was lucky enough to get the Peltors from a buddy. And uh, yeah, so I have a cheap radio, expensive Peltors. If you were to go buy these, Dualcom, Peltor, Comtac, I don't know, these are fours, I think. Uh, I mean, you're looking at 700 bucks. I don't know. So you could get freaking 14 Baofeng UV5Rs for that price. So I wouldn't go out and buy Peltors. If you already have a pair, then sweet, you're hooked up. There's other cheap electronic hearing protection out there. Uh, T-caps, you can get T-caps. The military, I was using T-caps when I was in Hawaii. Some people love them, some people hate them. I didn't like them having pushed in my ears all the way, but you can get you a set of used T-caps on eBay for around 120 ish dollars. T-caps are good. Um, I don't know that they have that outlet though now that I'm thinking about it. But anyway, so you can look into T-caps. But yeah, and you can always just use them like this. The last thing I'm going to say is not everybody in a team needs a radio. Not everybody in a team should have a radio. I'll say that. Not everybody in a team should have a radio. Um, if you have a team of four dudes and every, or let's just say four, four is a bad number. If you have a team of 13 guys and 13 guys have a radio, nobody's going to be able to get a word in. Okay. Leadership needs radios. Now, with that being said, I think everybody should own radios. I think everybody should own at least two of these. Number one, it doesn't have to hurt to have extras. Number two, you never know when you're going to be the dude who's got to step up and be the leader. So, and it doesn't hurt to know how to use them. I don't have um, NC Scout's book, The Gorilla Guide to the Baofeng UV5R, but I'm looking at getting it. But yeah, there's tons of videos out there about these things. Um, the first thing you should do like I said, is throw this junk ass antenna away. Get you one of these, or it's just a better antenna, don't matter what. Uh, there's other good antennas out there. Uh, second thing you should do is jailbreak it. Yep, jailbreak your radio. So yeah, guys, um, that pretty much sums up my video. I hope it wasn't too much of a ramble. It was kind of all over the place, but I work 12 hours, I work nights, I'm working seven to seven. Um, get home got to do stuff around the farm and then i try to put a video out video out so yeah if you made it this far please give me a like a share and a subscribe i appreciate it y'all